Hello and welcome to Acoustic Guide GJ. My name is Roy Johnson and today's video is all about capos. Three capos in particular. One is the brass chub. The second one is made by a company called Kaiser. And the third one is a Dario NS Pro. So it's a bit of a face off between these three capos. So I'll be talking about the pros and cons of each. I'm not endorsed by any of the manufacturers of these capos, so any kind of opinions I give are basically my own personal view. Some of you may be new to the world of capos. Uh, and basically they're fairly straightforward things. Um, the sole purpose of a capo really is to press the strings down uh, at some position on the guitar fingerboard. Um, but a demonstration might help just to kind of make it clear what they do. Let's say I'm taking a song, um, like I am just a poor boy, though my story is seldom told. Now that song that I was playing then was in the key of C. Now it may be that when you're trying to sing that, the lowest note of the song is too deep for you to sing. So ideally you want to sing that in a higher pitch. So what the capo does is, if I've been playing the song in C for example, and I put that capo on at the second fret, I play that C chord now, it's the same chord shape, it's actually gone up to a D in pitch, it's gone from C, C sharp to D. I'm just a poor boy, the story is seldom told. Uh, and it's interesting how a relatively small movement of the capo can make a huge difference to how you go about singing the song and how close it is to the pitch of your voice. Now the position that you set your capo in can be determined by trial and error or there is a kind of a more of a methodical approach to it. So this isn't the scope of today's lesson but I am planning on putting a video together which will explain how you can adjust the capo in a methodical way uh, which will make any song you sing um, pitched more accurately for your vocal range. Now if you like this video and you find it useful, please subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon. Um, that way I can let you know when I upload other videos. And please feel free to comment at any time um, about anything you think is useful either to me or to other people who may be watching. Excellent, so let's have a look at these three capos in a bit more detail. So the chop capo has two main moving parts. Uh, think of it as a hinge. There's that part of the hinge and then there's this part of the hinge. Um, it has a bar that goes across the strings. This part here goes on the back of the neck. And then this part here has um, an adjusting screw which uh, you can screw in and out to um, extend or reduce. Uh, and that presses against this hinged bar here. Uh, which, which creates a tension for placing it on the guitar itself. So we'll have a look at that in a bit more detail in just one second. Fitting the chub cap is, is relatively straightforward. Um, you, whenever you open it, it'll always open to its, its maximum uh, width, if you like. So you can always fit it to the thickest part of the neck, wherever that happens to be. So once you have it uh, kind of dropped into into place. Um, again I try and, try and hold it in place with my right hand and then you've got the, the, the little adjusting wheel at the back which you then have to kind of tighten and this is where it gets a bit guessworky. You have to tighten it sufficiently so that when you push that lever down it creates the pressure at the front of the guitar. So that's uh, that can take um, a couple of goes to get that pressure about right. Ha having said that, there's not a huge amount of difference in thickness over a few frets. So once you've got it right in, in one position, it would generally work for three or four other positions as well. The fine tuning of that knob at the back does mean that ideally if you can set the pressure to the minim minimum that you need for these strings uh, not to buzz, the guitar shouldn't go out of tune too much. Um, so the only slight drawback with this as a, as a capo is um, the bar is quite small so there is a kind of a limit to how far up some necks you can take it. Uh, and it's a little bit 
heavy, I suppose, because it's made of solid brass. Apart from that, it's a well-engineered piece of uh, equipment, and this one has lasted about 20 years, so um, I can't really complain at that. To take the cap off, just grab the bar back, pull it out, and the whole thing slackens off. Okay, so just to summarise the Chubb Capo, it has to be said it's well built, it's made of brass, solid, it lasts for years. The downside of this solidness is I suppose it feels quite heavy to me, um, and particularly if you've got a fairly light instrument, that may just make your instrument feel a little bit unbalanced. Um, it has got an adjuster, so you can adjust the tension. Um, one of the other drawbacks, I suppose, is that the bar itself is a little bit short for some of the wider neck guitars, so just be careful if you've had a custom-made guitar made, for example, which has got a wider fingerboard. Okay, so if this is all making sense to you and it's useful, please put a yes or something in the comments just so that I know that I'm doing a half reasonable job. Kaiser Capo is quite lightweight. It has um, a kind of a, a prong, two handles here that you squeeze together when you want to put the capo onto the guitar. And it has quite a long bar with a rubber pad underneath it and then a shorter bar that goes on the back of the neck with a, a again another kind of rubber pad which is supposed to stop the metal of that bar from digging into the back of your neck. Um, the squeeze, if you like, comes from a spring which I think you just about see there and that counteracts the pressure that you put on your, your fingers when you're actually attaching the capo. Um, so we'll see how that fits onto the guitar in just a moment. Okay, so the Kaiser capo should really be fairly straightforward to fit. Um, and it's up to you, I guess, whether you fit it uh, this way around, from the bottom up or from the top down. The problem I actually have is, is squeezing the thing because it's it's got quite a strong uh, quite a strong spring in there. Um, but anyway, that notwithstanding, all you do is you kind of get hold of the, the two parts, squeeze them together, and then drop them over the strings and jump it onto position. Um, but I think the slight drawback with this is I find that it's quite hard to tell how far down that bar's gone. Um, and as I say, it has got really quite got a, quite a, a vice-like grip. So it can tend to um, throw the strings out of tune a little bit if you're not careful. Uh, in fact, when I say careful, there's nothing you can do about it because there's no adjustment in terms of the pressure on this capo at all. Um, the good thing about it though is it's got a nice long bar so you can play it quite a long way up the neck without um, any of these, without sort of falling off the top string. So removing the capo obviously is the opposite to putting on. Again, I feel it a little bit awkward really but you just kind of have to grip, grip it with your left hand lift it off and there you go. Okay, let's just summarise the Kaiser Capo um, and to all intents and purposes the same kind of applies to this Boston Capo here. Um, the difference between the two actually is that the Boston Capo is quite a lot heavier than the Kaiser one. I think the Kaiser one's made out of aluminium whereas this feels more like it's made out of steel. Um, as I said before, it's got a nice long bar so it'd be great if you've got a reasonably sort of wide neck on your guitar or you're used to playing sort of further up neck. The slight downside I think is this um, pad here which is a little bit short and I think could possibly dig into the back of the neck of the guitar and also that the grip is very, the, sorry, the grip is very strong um, and to my mind that just distorts the strings a little bit. It uh, over presses them down. So that's something to bear in mind when deciding whether to go for one of these styles of capo. Okay, so the Didario capo, as you see, um, is still in this package. That is because I managed to lose my other one. Um, so we might as well just snip that open uh, and have a look at this one in a little bit more detail. The Didario capo is, again, it's a very, it's a very light capo, um, supposedly made out of aircraft grade aluminium. It has a metal bar that goes across there with a, um, a rubber pad underneath for pressing onto the strings. At the back or behind there's a, a shorter bar which, which goes onto the back of the neck. Again it has a rubber pad on it. Um, and you can kind of, it has a little bit of give so that when you fit it you can kind of 
press it to the tension that you, you like to hold it at. And then it has a fine adjustment wheel, so you can kind of squeeze it onto the strings and then just turn that to either increase or release the tension as, as necessary. Whole thing's quite nice, quite compact, uh, very sleek and good looking. So let's see how that fits onto the guitar itself. Fitting the Didaria cap is relatively straightforward. First thing is just to try and make sure there's enough space between the two bars to fit the thickness of the, the neck at the position you're going to place the cap on. Then all you do, or all I do, is I just drop that over the top. And what I like to do is, is put my uh, left finger on the bar itself, as if I'm actually playing a, a, a bar chord. And I just press that down, and at the same time, I press the back part of the, uh, the shorter bar on the back of the neck down. So I'm effectively kind of squeezing it into position. Then I can just turn that wheel and I get a sense straight away of the amount of pressure that I'm exerting uh, by fitting that capo. And then everything's good and it sounds nice and clear. And uh, Because you've got that fine adjust, it means you're not distorting the strings. And when you put the capo on or you take the capo off, there's not uh, a lot of retuning needed uh, each time you do it. And then to remove the capo, all you do is just loosen that top nut and lift it off. Okay, so, so just to summarise the Didario NS Pro, it's really nice that you can just squeeze it into position and then tighten up because that way you get a feel for how much pressure you're applying to the string so you're less likely to dis dis distort them. The bar is quite long which makes it good for kind of wide fingerboards or playing up the neck. It's quite lightweight and um, it's got a nice smooth style and design. I think I should summarise with my thoughts on capos in general. Um, I suppose the main things to consider are the length of the bar, so you can cover all the strings, and the amount of pressure you exert, because any more pressure than is needed to press the strings down is likely to kind of stretch the strings, and as I say, it'll put the guitar out of tune, so you have to keep retuning every time you, you move your capo. You may have to tune your guitar a little bit anyway, but uh, some cases it's, it, it's worse than others. Now there are many different types of capo, we've not even mentioned the stirrup capo which has a kind of a bolt um, or a screw thread at the back of the guitar and it kind of pulls down right from the centre of the, the neck. Um, but then they're about 50 quid each upwards, so that's a lot of money to pay for a capo if it's something that you don't use a, a great deal. Um, or you can manage just by fine tuning your strings as, as and when is necessary. But in terms of all the requirements, i.e. having that fine adjustment of the pressure and the bar that goes across and a, a nice slim look and feel. I think the Didario SN Pro meets all those requirements for me and by far it's the nicest capo that I've, I've owned. The other thing I should mention is that most capos come in various sizes. So here I've got quite a small, this is like the Didario and it's Pro but it's in a miniature form which is ideal for mandolins or banjos. And actually it's great for mandolins because mandolins are quite light and easily unbalanced by putting a heavier cap on. So this is a great capo for mandolins. Um, Chubb to the similar kind of capo, but again, unfortunately, it, it's solidly built, but it is quite weighty, so it may give you that slightly kind of top-heavy feel to your instrument. The other thing to consider when buying a capo is that some fretboards are radius and some fretboards are flat. So for example, a classical guitar fretboard is flat. So if you're buying a capo for a classical guitar, make sure that the bar is flat and not slightly radius. Uh, and similarly for an acoustic guitar, if your acoustic guitar has a slightly radius fingerboard, which most of them do, make sure your capo has a slight curve in it as well. Otherwise you'll end up with string buzz. In the majority of cases, a curved bar capo would be marketed as an acoustic guitar capo, whereas a flat barred capo would be marketed as a classical guitar capo. Okay, so that's about it for now. Um, not much more to be said about capos. As I said, I will put a video together just talking about how to make the best use of a capo and use it to kind of um, adjust the pitch of the song so it suits your voice. If you've enjoyed this video, please hit the subscribe button. It's absolutely free, which is great because not much in this world is free these days. And also click the bell icon and then I can let you know when I've uploaded uh, new content. Uh, hope to see you again soon. Take care. Bye for now.